Hello and welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. Union Agriculture Minister Narendra Tomar expressed confidence that the BJP will retain power in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Tomar said that the farm laws were brought for the betterment of the farmers. One of the December 4th voting firing survivors said that the paratroopers who killed the innocent civilians are not Indian Army but terrorists. He also expressed resentment over the silence of the Naga factions over the incident. Manipur Youth Congress Committee today stormed Raj Bhavan demanding immediate repeal of AFSPA. The Youth Congress submitted a memorandum to Governor. Party workers are to meet the Governor tomorrow. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh slammed the opposition. He said that the Bharatiya Janata Party does not do politics by lying to the people. Now for the news and details. The Forum for Naga Reconciliation organized a program in memory of the Oting firing victims here at Christian Higher Secondary School, Dimapur, today. During the program, members of FNR and Eastern Naga Women Organization President N. Langmai Pom delivered speeches. Nyamang Wangsha, one of the survivors, shared the ordeal of the incident. While sharing the horror experience, he was thankful that he is among the few survivors. He lamented over the silence of the Naga factions. So far, no faction spoke or stood against the incident, he said. Nagaland's Mon District incident continues to evoke people across the northeastern states to repeal the Armed Forces Special Powers Act in the region. Today, members of the Manipur Youth Congress Committee stormed Raj Bhavan demanding immediate repeal of AFSPA. 
The party workers shouted slogans such as repeal AFSPA, down, down BJP government. They also held placards and a rally march to Governor La Ganeshan officials' resident and submitted a memorandum. The governor could not meet them in person. Police personnel asked the protesters to return as the governor had other important matters to attend to, but they insisted upon meeting the governor. Youth Congress working president Johnny Maite said that the members returned back after they got an appointment with the governor for tomorrow. Maite said that they are ready to take various forms of agitation until the act is repealed. Responding to a question asked by Hornbill TV, Johnny Maite said if ASPA continue to exist, we will continue to witness the incident that happened in Mon District. 16 civilians were killed and many others have been injured. So this very act should be removed immediately. Otherwise, because of this act, many more other unwanted incidents will be witnessed by the future generations as well as by today's people. So I earnestly appeal to all the people of Manipur as well as to the all to all the people of Northeast that we also move move forward so that we can we can act against this uh, very uh, uh, this uh, draconian act. As you have witnessed today, we are just in front of the uh, in front of the Rajbhavan gate, and we have we are seeking permission to submit a memorandum. And if they are not given the permission, so that we can submit this uh, memorandum, then many other uh, protests, any other form of protest can be taken place. So in the very uh, recent uh, this thing in the near future. Union Agriculture Minister Narendra Tomar on Sunday expressed confidence that the Bharatiya Janata Party will retain power in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand where elections are due next year. Speaking to reporters after attending the BJP Kisan Morcha's national executive meeting, Tomar said that decisions were taken in the meet for the growth of farmers. Tomar added that the farm laws were brought for the betterment of the farmers. Ahead of the Uttar Pradesh Assembly polls next year, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Sunday slammed the opposition party and said that the Bharatiya Janata Party does not do politics by lying to the people. Rajnath Singh flagged off BJP's Jan Vishwas Yatra commencing from Jhansi and concluding in Kanpur. Speaking at the Jan Vishwas Yatra in Jhansi, Singh said that they do not do politics by lying to the public and then they do whatever they say. In the 75th year of independence, many politicians have made false promises. But we have fulfilled all our promises, especially the abrogation of Article 370, he added. BJP is set to take out Jan Vishwas Yatra from six places in the state from Sunday. The Yatras was inaugurated by the party's top leaders, including Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath and other union ministers. जो हम लोगों ने कहा वह करके हम लोगों ने दिखाया लेकिन मैं जानता हूं आज आपने हाथी लोगों ने लगभग पचास तरह सूर्य हो गया है इस आजाद भारत के इतिहास में नेताओं ने जनता को बहुत सारे आश्वासन दिए बहुत सारे वादे किए आंशिक रूप से भी अपने वादों को पूरा कर लिया होगा उन नेताओं ने सारा भारत या भारत दुनिया का सबसे ताकतवर देश बन गया हो नेताओं की कथनी और करनी में अंतर होने के कारण भारत की राजनीति पर से लोगों का भरोसा धीरे धीरे कम होता चला गया और देश के नेताओं पर से लोगों का भरोसा धीरे धीरे कम होता चला गया टूटता चला गया the United Kingdom recorded more than 10,000 new Omicron cases while the new COVID variant related death toll rose to seven. The UK Health Security Agency, UKHSA, confirmed on Saturday that an additional 10,059 cases of the new variant, three times as many as Friday, and taking the total number detected to 24,968, Xinhua News Agency reported. The country registered 90,418 coronavirus cases in the late, latest 24-hour period. 
The second time cases have been higher than 90,000, bringing the total number of coronavirus cases in the country to 11,279,428, according to official figures released on Saturday. The country also reported a further 125 coronavirus-related deaths. The total number of coronavirus-related deaths in the UK now stands at 147,173 with 7,611 COVID-19 patients still in hospital. The latest figures came as London Mayor Sadiq Khan declared a major incident in the British capital following a huge surge in COVID-19 cases fueled by the fast-spreading Omicron coronavirus variant. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday inaugurated and laid the foundation stone of multiple development projects worth Rs 600 crore in Goa, including the renovated Fort Aguada Jail Museum. On the occasion of Goa Liberation Day, the Prime Minister inaugurated a super speciality block at Goa Medical College, New South Goa District Hospital, Aviation Skill Development Centre at Mopa airport and the gas insulated substation at Dabulim Navelim in Margao. During the event organized at Dr. Shyama Prasad Mukherjee Stadium, Modi also felicitated the freedom fighters and veterans of Operation Vijay as part of Goa Liberation Day celebrations. Speaking at the event, the Prime Minister said that the land and sea of Goa have been blessed with nature's boon. Recalling his recent meeting with Pope Francis in Vatican City, Modi said that the sentiments of the head of the Catholic Church was overwhelming for him. When Goa ki aajhati ke liye sangarsh hua, to sam milkar ek saath lade, ek saath sangarsh kiya tha. Videsi hukumat ke khilaaf, pintoj kranti ko to yaha ke native Christian ne hi लीड किया था यही भारत की पहचान है यह मत मतांतर सबका एक ही मतलब है मानवता की सेवा मानव मात्र की सेवा भारत की इस एकता इसी मिलीजुली पहचान की तारीफ पूरी दुनिया a day after a youth was beaten to death for allegedly committing sacrilege at the Golden Temple in Amritsar, Sikh activists at Nizampur village and Kapurthala on Sunday thrashed to death another unidentified youth over an alleged sacrilege attempt at a Gurdwara in the presence of the police. In a viral video of the incident, a Sikh man is seen thrashing the youth. A senior police officer said that there was no proof of sacrilege of the Guru Granth Sahib or the Gudka Sahib, a religious book, at the Gurdwara. Police officials rushed to the spot in the morning after the youth was caught by the people at the Gurudwara. The cops directed them to hand over the youth and assured that the police will investigate the matter, but they did not relent. दरबार साहब के अंदर जी उन्होंने टास्क फोर्स है वो एक इंटैलीजेंस विंग भी बनाया जाए और भी पूरा ध्यान के जोड़े ये भी जिदा सी पी साहब दस देने के सवेरे ग्यारह बज के चाली मिनट से एंटर किया तो इन्ना देर उ दरबार साहब के रहना अकाल तख्त साहब के सामने लम्मे पिया रहा सुता रहा उ अठ नौ घंटे रहना जोड़ा यद मतलब कि ये पिछे कोई गल हैगी जी ਉਹਦੀ ਮੌਤ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਸਭ ਕੁਝ ਹੀ ਖਤਮ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਪਰ ਫਿਰ ਵੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹਦਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਚੈਕਿੰਗ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਉਹਦੀ ਅੱਜ ਉਹਦੇ ਪੋਸਟਮਾਰਟਮ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਉਹਦਾ ਵਿਸਰਾ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਜਾਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਹੋਰ ਕੋਈ ਬਲੱਡ ਟੈਸਟ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਆ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਸਰ ਸ਼ਨਾਖਤ ਕੋਈ ਹੋਈ ਆ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਾ ਕੁਝ ਅਜੇ ਸ਼ਨਾਖਤ Two political leaders from the BJP and SDPI, the Social Democratic Party of India, have been murdered in Kerala's Alapuza, pushing the police to ban large gatherings in the district. Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan has condemned the murders and assured strict action. Late last evening, SDPI State Secretary K.S. Shan was murdered while he was on the way home. The police said Shan was on a two-wheeler when a gang in a car intercepted him, hit his bike, and stabbed him. He succumbed to his injuries at a Kochi hospital around midnight, the police said. 
Less than 12 hours later, some unidentified men barge into the house of the BJP's Renjit Srinivasan, who was the secretary of the party's OBC unit, and hacked him to death. The police are investigating the matter. So in such a circumstance, if we go ahead with the Silver Line project, which doesn't have the support of the people, which will make lakhs of people homeless, which will ultimately result in ecological disasters, environmental damages, government should rethink its decision and drop this project is what I want to request the state government. So in such a circumstance, Prohibitory orders under Section 144 has been imposed in the district for two days and strict checking is being conducted. Unnecessary gatherings will not be allowed, an officer said. Such heinous and inhuman acts of violence are dangerous to the state. I am sure that all the people would be ready to identify and isolate such killer groups and their hateful attitude, Chief Minister Pinaraya Vijayan said in a press conference, assuring police action to identify the accused. The BJP, the BJP and the SDPI have accused each other of being responsible for the murders. Public Health Engineering Department Minister of Nagaland, Na Jacob Zimomi, congratulated the citizens of Newland and Chimugadima on being declared as the 14th and 15th district of Nagaland. The minister said that Newland and Chumugadima could also become municipal towns apart from Dimapur, Kohima and Mokokcho. The recognition of Chumugidima and Newland as a district has been a long felt desire of the people of these two districts and this will give impetus to the social, political and economic development of these two districts and being in the very close proximity with Dimapur district in terms of other social progression and this will boost the economic activities in the state and also give employment opportunities for both educated and uneducated youths in other avenues being the catchment area near densely populated urban district of Dimapur. I also congratulate the people of Tsemenyu in getting their dreams accomplished by the state government. I'm grateful to the cabinet members for supporting this and especially grateful to the Honorable Chief Minister Nifi Rio and all those who have supported to make this a reality today. It is the fruit of democracy to grant the wishes of all the people of these two districts. Both Chumugidima and Newland has high potential to be developed into full-fledged municipal towns apart from Dimapur, Koima and Mukokcho. As the PHED Minister of the State and an MLA of these two new districts, I congratulate every citizen and wish them a very happy and prosperous future ahead. They should be assured that the present government is dedicated to all-round development and prosperity of the state. Sporadic incidents of violence marred the Kolkata Municipal Corporation elections as few people were injured after crude bombs were hurled outside polling centres on Sunday. Two incidents of hurling of crude bombs were reported in Sialda and Kanna areas of Kolkata and police contingents were rushed to the spot to bring the situation under control, a state election commission official said. Although the SEC claimed that only one person was injured, police said that three people were injured, of whom one has lost his leg. The BJP and the CPI allege that the Trinamool has forcibly stopped opposition booth agents from entering polling centres in several wards, a charge that the ruling party termed baseless. CPI activists staged a road blockade in Bhaga Jatin area alleging that their polling agents were not allowed inside the booths. The BJP state leadership announced that it will conduct peaceful demonstrations across the state in protests against violence and malpractices in the polls. Hey, 
Union Home Minister Amit Shah on December 19 said that under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Central Forensic Science Laboratory is playing an important role in empowering the criminal justice system of the entire country. Under the leadership of Prime Minister, CFSL is playing an important role in empowering the criminal justice system of the entire country, he said. Air quality in the national capital has improved to the poor quality on Sunday with the overall air quality index at 290. According to the System of Air Quality and Weather Forecasting and Research, the concentrations of PM was 2.5 and PM10 stood at 117 in the poor and 193 in the moderate category, respectively. Meanwhile, the air quality in the NCR region like Noida and Gurugram are in the poor and very poor category, respectively. The AQI in Noida stands at 283, while AQI in Gurugram stands at 308. As per the government agencies, an AQI between 0 and 50 is considered good, 51 and 100 satisfactory, 101 and 200 moderate, 201 and 300 poor, 301 and 400 very poor, and 401 and 500 severe. While addressing the third India-Central Asia dialogue in New Delhi, Turkmenistan Foreign Minister Rashid Meridov said that the Central Asia-India dialogue is natural and impartial. He is convinced that today's dialogue will set the right guidelines for further partnership, adjustment of their positions and approach towards a new goal of cooperation. Central Asia and India dialogue is natural and impartial, he added. India dialogue, in our opinion, is natural and impartial. Its development is uh, reasonable both from the uh, historical and perspective point of views. Our peoples are successors of historical experience of good neighborliness, um, uh, mutual understanding, and joint traditions. In this regard, I am convinced that today's dialogue will set the right guidelines for further partnership, close adjustment of our positions and approaches towards new goals of conflict. Director of Public Health of Odisha, Dr. Niranjan Mishra, on December 18 told ANI that people coming from at-risk countries are sent to seven days home quarantine. Government of, guide, government of India guideline how to uh, do the surveillance of those international passengers. We are daily downloading data of people coming from at-risk countries and those coming from not at-risk countries. For the artist countries, our job is to ensure that they are quarantined in their home quarantine. If there is no facility of home quarantine, then we have requested our district collectors and the commissioners to have uh, to keep arrangement of uh, institutional quarantines. And we have to ensure a RT-PCR testing on the eighth day of uh, their arrival in India. And those coming positive in this RT-PCR test their um, whole genome sequencing is being done. The Agra Lab of the Defense Research and Development Organization, Aerial Delivery Research and Development Esta Establishment, conducted a flight demonstration of controlled aerial delivery system of 500 kilogram capacity on December 18. The flight demonstration is part of a series of activities organized towards celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mautsav, commemorating 75 years of independence. That's all for the news. Keep watching Hornbill TV.